Okay, so A3 deals with exponential decay. It's a bit, it's a bit of the same stuff that we've been dealing with when we're dealing with exponential growth. I'm going to let you guys answer some of these questions here. So start out with let's go ahead and get our learning goals down. Write down what the standard form of an exponential function is and the different parts of it. Standard form of an exponential function. Tyler, what do you got? Y equals ABX, all right? And Ashley, what's A stand for? Good, the starting point. Or, Bree? Okay, what's B? The base, good. Good, so A is our starting point, or our Y intercept. A has to be greater than zero. B is our base, our growth factor. Remember, it's growth. When is it growth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when when B is greater than 1, we get growth. Okay? When is it decay? We haven't got to that today. That's what we're doing today. I think. Is it like lower than 1, like either negatives or like a decimal? Uh, it is lower than 1, but it's not a negatives. Okay? So ha if if growth is when it's greater than 1, decay has to be yeah. Yeah, it has to be greater than zero. So when B is greater than zero, okay, and when B is less than one. So it's in between. Another way of thinking of that is when B is between one and zero. Okay, when B is between one and zero, it's exponential decay. All right. A lot of you'll think of that as fractions, but the fraction has to be a number that's between <coughs> 1 and 0. X stands for the number of increases, the number of times we're increasing it. Okay, then we had one other piece, talked about graph when we did growth. The graph of exponential growth, if you remember a growth graph looked like, growth graph looked like this. A decay graph starts here and it goes down. Okay, so as you're moving from left to right on your graph, as x is increasing, y is decreasing, or as you're moving from left to right, the graph is going downward. That's a decay. Okay. All right, so really everything else is going to be very similar to what we've been doing in terms of exponential graphs. So if you're using a graphing calculator, you can have that out. If you're using just a regular calculator, you can have that out. But what I want to do is I want to graph that function right there. Okay, use our table. So if you're using a calculator to help you with the table, great. Okay, but before you even build your table, I want you to tell your neighbor what your starting point is going to be. Shouldn't have to do any math to figure your starting point out. I'll have more graphing calculators out there here in a minute. Okay, what's our starting point? Savannah? Yeah, it's when x is 0. Okay, what's our y then? 1. Uh, it's oh, not no. 1. Oh, my bad. Uh, 2. Nope, not 2. It is 10. How come it's 10? Because A is the y intercept. Good. Yeah, A is our y intercept. Remember? That's our starting point. Yeah? Yeah, you're going to do that. You're going to do these graphs on that little sheet. Hey, so A is the y intercept. It's also whenever we put 0 in for x. Remember that's going to give us that's going to give our us our y intercept because it crosses right here. So when x is zero, it hits the y axis. So in this case, our a term, we put zero in, it makes this whole back piece disappear, and we're just left with the ten. Okay, that's zero ten there. It's not focusing too well. What's up? Good scratch. 
Okay. Everyone have the table filled out? Get going on it. I'll put some more graphing calculators in. Hey, just out of curiosity, how many of you are really using your graphing calculator on this? You're putting it into your Y equals menu? How many remember how to do that? Okay, there's, so there's two ways to do this, right? We could go through. Many of you are doing it this way where you say, okay, I know this is zero, so this is one, this is two, this is three, I'm going to go that route. It's negative one, negative two, and negative three. And then all you're doing is substituting in. You're changing x every time, right? So the only thing that keeps changing is that x value. Okay, and then you just keep putting, you put the 3 in for x, you put the 2 in for x, you put the 1 in, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and you solve those. How many of you are just cranking those out on your calculator? You just keep changing it. And okay, how many of you are using your table feature on your calculator where it does the math and gives you the table? Okay, well, for those of you that are doing it, what do we get right here? 0.9 to the first is, 0.9 times 10 is, 9, okay? This is, 0.81 times 10, or did you get 8.1, okay? 8.1 here, 0.9 to the third, that's 0.27. Oh, you guys don't have that? That's ridiculous, okay. Oh, hey, I'm going to, I've got it here, I'm going to put it on. Oh, 7.29, thank you. I'm going to go 7.3, just round to the nearest 10. Okay, negative 1, so this gives us 11.1, okay, and here we get 12.4. All right, awesome, okay. And then here? Don't, you get anything. Okay, here, okay. So you guys don't have that extra spot, I'm sorry. All right, now, you also, for those of you who are it would be nice if everyone would look up here just so that we were clear on what I'm talking about. Those of you that are using your graphing calculator, saves you a lot of time. Wyatt Wahlberg really likes to use his graphing calculator all the time. Right, Wyatt? See? He'll tell you. He'll come in, right? Yeah. See? Graphing calculators, use them all the time. Yeah, see? He's right out there. He'll tell you. Yeah. Hey, go to your Y equals menu. Rhymes with Wyatt. Okay. And 10 times 0 0.9 to the power of x. Okay, everyone put that in. So if you're using a graphing calculator, I promise you this is a shortcut. You can't see it? Well, I can try to turn on that light, but then it puts kind of a glare on it. Okay. 0 0.9 to the power, or to the x power. Put the up arrow and then this button, remember? Did I show this the other day? Yes. Okay, so if you guys don't remember it and you're here the other day, you really should write it down, I promise. Huh? Hey guys, seriously, this, this will save you tons of time in the long run. Alright? Okay? Alright, everyone have it? Okay, if you don't have it, raise your hand. People around, help. Help if you have your hand up. Okay, good. Okay, we are now hitting... How do we get it to graph? graph? Yeah, we push the button that says graph. Okay? So remember that top row up there, this controls all your graphing stuff. We get graph, got a graph, and when we look at this graph, unfortunately, it kind of looks like a straight line. Whoa. I can that. Dude, my battery's just. Ah, yeah, joke's on me. He's the one who said yesterday it'll die when it like yes. turns off. Yes. That's yeah. It's karma, Mr. McCoy. Yeah, karma. For what you said yesterday. What did I say? Uh, you said something like other people are complaining how the battery.
how you said that the battery is low, and you said it's low when it's dead. Yeah, well, hey, the batteries were low then, right? Okay, so there, I've hit graph now. And you get that picture, pay close attention here, get that picture, and that picture almost, you can kind of see it's starting to curve down. Okay, uh, notice my window here. This window, this is not the same window, right? So how do I change my window? Hit window, okay? And where am I starting at for X? About negative five, so we'll go negative five. How about my maximum on X? Five. Everyone tell your neighbor what you're going up by on X. Okay, on your finger, what is it? Appropriate, thank you. Okay, minimum, why minimum? Well, we don't have a minimum because we haven't defined our scale. Now, if I'm at 13.7, and that's my high, and 7.3 is my low, well, that means if I really want to find out what I should go up by, and pay close attention here, those of you that, that don't take notes on this, it might be something to take notes on. This is how you figure out what to go up by. You find what's called the range. Okay? One type of range is when you take the largest number and you subtract the smallest number. Okay? So I'm doing 13.7 minus 7.3. And what is that? How about 7 to 13? How about 7 to 10? 3 and then 10. 6.4, good. Hey, hey, for those of you that can't do that, in your head, 7 to 10 is 3. 10 to 13 is 3, that's 6. And then 0.3 to 0.7 is 0.4, 6.4. Okay, now, how many lines do I have from here to here? 10. 10. So if I take that 6.4 and divide it by the number of lines, that gives me what I should go up by approximately, not exactly, but about 0 0.64. You just move the decimal one over, divide by 10. Okay, so maybe not, maybe not 0 0.64. Maybe I go up by, by like, I don't know, point. I can go up by 0.75 or a half. Okay, let's try a half. Let's see if a half works. So that gives me one. Each, every two is one, right? One. Two, three, four, five. Well, here's the problem. We, we didn't start at 7.3, right? We should probably start at 7.3 if we're going to do that. Otherwise, otherwise, if we're not going to put, which means, well, let me back up. That would mean we'd have to put a break in this graph. Now, usually that's not the best thing to do, but it's okay to do that. We can put a break. We can say, well, I'm going to break it right here. Because all this data down here, it's not mattering. So I just put like this zigzag line. How many of you have done breaks in a graph before? Okay. And now that kind of took up one of my lines. But I'm going to go up. I'm going to start at. What should I start at? Seven. 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 Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Almost made it. Yeah, I'm still off a bit. You know what? I'm going to just extend this one up one more spot. <coughs> Call that 12. I'm going to be good at 12, okay? 12.4 is just going to be a little above that. I probably would have been, I probably should have maybe not went up by a half, maybe like 0.75 because I rounded down. Always round up when you're figuring what you're going to go up by. That makes sense? That way you can fit all your points. So if, it, if I could have maybe went up by ones. But I'm going to go up by a half. So that's what we kind of picked. So let's go through that. So if we got 13.7 uh, is not going to work. 12.4, can almost get that. Negative 2 and 12.4 is like right-ish there. Now that's not really accurate when you put it off the graph, but that's okay. Okay. Negative 1 and 11.1. .1. Negative 1, 11.1 is like right there. And we got 0, 10. And we got 1, 9 or. No relation to 40. Okay, and then 2, 8.1. You guys missed that one. And then 3 and 7.3. You got it. Nice. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, there we go. All right. 
Good. And it still kind of looks like a straight line. All right? So if I'm moving this cross here, I'm going, wow, dun, 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 dun. All right. And, well, that's where I'm at. Now, I only put one arrow on notice because I'm going to now go back to my calculator. What did I want my minimum to be? Seven. Yeah, probably, probably seven. Just set them on my desk, please. Thank you. Okay. Well, maybe zero down here, right? But we're going to see the seven. So but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with seven. All right. And the maximum is? Twelve. Yeah, about 12. Okay. And then I'm going out by? What am I going out by? A half. A half. Okay. Everyone with me? Okay, and then I hit graph, and let's see if we get the same looking picture. Pretty close, the same, right? Here's what I want to do. If we wanted to get all these values, we could have hit our table. How do we get to table? Second, and then graph. That right there says table. And notice I've got exact same points, and then down here at three, that's where I left off. I'm going to scroll down and see what four would have been. Four would have been eight, or is that six? 6.6-ish. 6 6.6-ish. 6 .6 well, that would be, if this is 7, six, that's like way down here. Okay? Now, it doesn't really work with the way we scaled it. But sometimes if we extend it, notice we keep going down, keep going down. The further out we get, we get really close to what number? Yeah, are we ever going to hit 0? Yes. Like 0 exactly is there any way you can ever raise something to a power and get zero? No. No, what's the zero power? One. One. Look, you get really, really close to zero, don't you? But you never get to zero. Okay, so eventually this line will keep going and eventually it'll get, it'll cruise and it'll get really, really close to the x axis and never hit it. It'll start running, almost looks like it's parallel to it. Okay, so it will curve, yes. It's just we don't see a lot of it. Okay? What does the E mean? The E just means <coughs> times 10 to the negative 4. Exponential function. We'll, we'll get to that later this chapter, actually. Okay, I want you guys to go on to number 10. Try that one. Use your graphing calculator if you want. But I want you to figure out what you should be going up by, what your scale is going to be. That's a key piece. Very good. Hey, everyone's right here. How many put their stuff into their graph and calculator, their equation? Hey, just, just out of curiosity, when you put the 1 half in, you, how did you use do that? 0.5. Yeah, you could do 1 divided by 2, right? Just like a fraction, or you could use 0.5, but you could just do 1 over 2. Okay, and then to the x power. All right, I hit graph, and my, my window's all messed up from our last problem. So what I'm going to do... Anytime I want to get back to the original, the standard viewing window, we use a zoom feature. Everyone go to zoom. Hit zoom, and we're hitting zoom. Which one? Zoom out. Three. No, nope, keep reading. You could zoom out. It'll never get you right where you want to be. Zoom standard. Yeah, we want the standard, man. We're setting the standard. Zoom standard. Okay, and then there we go. There's our graph. It's just kind of hanging over here. And once again, Let's get it back to this. Now, I made you go zoom standard just so I can make you change the window again. Everyone go to window. I want you to put in the correct x, max, min, and scale. Min, max, and scale for x. I don't know how to do that. Well, you guys do it. I'm going to move mine over here so you can't see it, and I'm going to do it. Is it five? Hey, don't ruin the movie. <laughs> yeah, like let everyone know the ending. Yeah, I got good. Okay, what is it? Okay, X men. Uh oh. Yeah? Negative 5. X max. Rachel, X max. All right, time's up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me, let me, no, stop. Everyone look here. Am I doing this in vain? That means, am I doing this and not helping you at all? Okay, how many want me to keep working up here? Then that means I need your participation. That means you need to pause and you need to participate now. If I go through another question and don't get answers like that, 
okay, like we just did, and you guys aren't you guys aren't answering questions, then I'm done. All right, and then you're on your own. So it's participation. Otherwise, you got to use the textbook. Okay, here we go. What is the what is the x minimum? Raise your hand, please. You got it. Okay. Not enough people. Explain to your neighbor how we know what the x minimum is. Now, I've already went through it, so now you guys are talking about. Okay. Time's up. Michael, what's the x minimum? Negative five. Why is it negative five? Good, because on the graph, x stops at negative five. What's the x maximum, McKenna? Five, why? That's where the x's stop on our graph. Good. What's our x scale? What are we going up by every time? Grace. We're going up by one. Now, once again, I only have two of you raise your hand on that. Now we're back to where we were a second ago. Okay? Next question is going to be a big deal. Question? You could go up by two. However, we're going up by one on this on this scale, okay. right? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put one in our calculator right here. Okay, now, how many of you have filled out your table? Okay, give me some values here. What goes here? Zero. Zero. What goes here? Five twelve. Someone raise their hand and tell me how I know that's five twelve. Okay, Jennifer. Good. All right, so we got to fill all this stuff in now, right? Yeah. Oops, that's negative one. Okay, what's this one? Um, 256. 256. Everyone, this one. 128. 128. Here. Nine. 64. Yeah, but you you may not have it, but you can figure it out, right? Okay, what's happening every time? Okay, stop. Hold on. Now we have the we have the stairs. They're looking. I'm not sure what they're looking at. I know Seahawks stuff up here is cool. Don't have to stare at it though. It'll be here after class. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's dividing by two every time or multiplying by a half. So this cut in half. This cut in half. I should be able to just know what this is, especially if you play that one game. Okay. What's this? One, zero, two, four, and this is? Twenty forty eight, that's the game. Okay? This one is? Forty ninety six. Forty ninety six. All right. Really? Okay. Hey, that's good though. All right. So my question is, what are we going up by? We're gonna go up by one? So one, two, three. No, 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 no. We could, but it's a grab. You meant on X, right? Okay. Yep, on X we're going up by one. On Y, yeah? Yeah, let's find the range. The range would be 4096 minus 64 is? Don't use your calculator. Come on, how far away from 96 are you from 64? Count up. 70, 80, 90. 42. 30. Wait, 32. 32. 32. So it's? 4,032. The way you get better at math is you challenge yourself. I know that took like five extra seconds. However, okay, 4032. You go 4032, and then what do we do? Divide it by 10. Why? Because there's 10, so 10 spots. Okay, so we're at? 403.2. Now, last time we rounded down. Should we round down? No. Well, let's round up. What should we go to? 404. So that means we have to count by 404s. Do we want to do that? No. What do we want to count by? 400. We can't go down. 410. If we go by 410, that's even a little tougher. When we're dealing in hundreds and thousands, maybe going up by 500 is okay. It's like it, maybe rounding this up to the nearest hundred. Okay? Let's say, that's what I was thinking too. Let's say 500. Now, 450 would work and 404 would work. But let's just go 500. I mean, when you're talking 404 and these numbers, it's not going to matter as much. So 500, so that means 500 
1,000, maybe I'll mark 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Now it gave me a little more than I needed, but that's okay. 5,000. Now you didn't have to mark all those. You could have just went up to the very top and said 5,000. That defines your scale. This is negative 1,000. Okay, so if I want now, I can go back to my window and I can actually put in my Y mens and my, my Y maxes. Just if I want to see what the picture is going to look like. I could also just plot the points. But my Y min is? 5,000. No, no. Oh, no, 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 1,000. Negative 1,000. Negative 1,000. There you go, third time. Okay, max? 5,000. 5,000. Go. Going up by? 500. Scale is 500. And we hit graph, and this is what our picture should look like when we're done. Do we see the curve? Yep. Yeah, dude, that's like a pro curve right there. That's awesome. Tacos. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay. So we graph it. Hey, negative 3, 4096. Can't see. Thank you. Whew. Okay. I set that over there. Negative 3, 40, 96, thank you. And then negative 2, 20, 48, so really close to 2,000. Can't even tell it's off there. Negative 1, 10, 24. Okay. And 0, 5, 12. And 1, 2, 56, about halfway. And 2, 128. It's like really tough to see. And then 3, and okay, we're getting like really close. We're, we're getting really close to which line? The x-axis or y equals? Zero. zero. But y can never be zero, right? There's our curve. Yeah, I know. Now, sorry, my curve didn't look as good right there. Now, if I was going to blame someone, I'd, I'd blame my pencil. Okay. It's a something. There we go. All right. But I don't blame. Okay, pretty cool? Yeah. Here, here's the deal, you guys. We've spent so long. Look, I'm, we're videoing this. This is 27 minutes in. And that goes with our work time and stuff on two graphs and using the graphing calculator. You, you, why, why do I think it's important? Because in trig, the, in advanced algebra, we're using it all the time. All the time. Okay? If you guys can use this, it saves you time. It's mine. It's on my desk. It, I haven't on me. It's like vibrating, I think. It means that hopefully that text is just lost in Seattle. Then. That'd be good. Okay. <laughs> Either that or my phone's ringing. All right, I'll try to put it on silent. All right, so we got it. Make sure you're taking good notes on it. I can't teach. We can't spend this long on it every time. Next time we pull out the graphing calculator tomorrow, and I say, hey, let's graph these, I'm hoping you know how to do it. You have this stuff and you know how to find your range and use that to find to make your scale and your intervals. Okay? All right. So here we go. Next piece. Any questions on this? No. They're amazing, I know. They look cool. All right. Moving on. Here we go. Next part, example three says calculate the percent of decrease for each decay factor. Percent of decrease. There are two terms you need to know the difference of. Percent of decrease and decay factor. One is a decimal, one's a percent. Now, one of these terms means percent and one means decimal. Now, tell me when to stop when I get to the one that means percent. Stop. 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 How do we know that one's the percent? Yeah, dude, it says percent. Now, that may seem, you, some of you are like, well, yeah, duh. Okay. When you're doing your assignment and you're writing percent after stuff and it doesn't say percent, that's what you got to say duh to yourself because it happens all the time. It's not as easy as you think. This one is decimal. This one is decimal. Now, you know what? I was going to write a decimal. I'm just going to write the word decimal. Okay? My trick students would be pleased. I'm using a pencil. I was using a pen earlier. Okay? So, what we look at is think about think about it this way. Let's say you go and buy pizza. How many like pizza? Okay, now when you order a pizza, like if I go, I go to Little Caesars a lot since it's right by my house. Cheap, easy, good pizza. Okay, so if I order a pizza from Little Caesars, they always show you, 
right? Like they're showing off their pizza. If I order a pizza and they don't show it to me and I walk out and I get home and there's a piece missing, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a happy camper. It's like someone ate some of my pizza before they gave it to me. And when I get home and I get my, my, my pizza, my, my, my pizza pie man, I want the whole thing. And the whole thing represents 100%. So when I am de when my pizza starts decaying naturally because I've ate it, okay? When when my pizza starts disappearing, I want to start with the 100 and move down from there. When I am decaying, I am starting at what percent? 100%. I'm starting at 100%. Now this is decaying. It says calculate the percent of decrease how much did you decrease in percent for this factor? This decay factor is what? What percent is that? That is 90%. Now, how far do I have to move from 100 to get to 90? 10. Good. So I have to subtract 10% to get to this 90% that that is. This is 90%. OK, so if I'm subtracting 10%, that is my percent of DK, or decrease, excuse me, my percent of decrease. To get to 90%, you had to subtract 10%. The other way to think about it is if this is 90%, what do I have to add to get to 100? 10%. 10. So what percent does 85 represent? 85%. It, it represents 85%. How much did it DK? 15%. Good. So the percent decrease is 15%. It decreased 15%. That's all you're doing there. Okay? Try number 15 and 16. Figure out how much you are, what percent you are going down to get to that decay factor. Okay, raise your hand if you got number 15. Maddie, what do you got? 91%, good. You're currently at 9%, and you've got to subtract that 9 or add 91 to get to that. Yes? What do you got for the next one? 28%. I got 18. How many got it? You're good. Okay, questions? Try this one then. Number 21. Now read the directions carefully to yourself. Okay, so on number 21, are we going, or is our answer going to be in percent or decimal form, by the way? Decimal. Trying to get percent, we're calculating the decay factor, the decimal to get the percent they're giving us. What do you think, Rachel? Or not Rachel, excuse me, Grace. 0 0.25, yeah. How many thought that? Good. So we, we started at 100, we got down to 75%, which meant we, our percent decrease, our decay factor is 0 0.25. We actually, I said that wrong. We started at 100 and we're decreasing 75%, which is bringing us to 25%. So if we're starting here at 100, and we are decreasing 1.5%, what are we at? 0.005, is that what you want me? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good, so this would give us 98.5%, which in decimal form is? 0.985. Right, we're subtracting one and a half. No, I, now I got this. Okay. Uh, How about 23? We're at 100. We subtract four. We get? 96. 0.96. Good. So 0.96. You know, you should always put a zero. That's just good form. Yeah. Oh. There are heroes. Zeros are heroes. 100% minus 18.2. 81.8. I mean, 
Okay. Okay, very good. Here's our assignment. We'll pause there. So, just, just so we're clear, when we were looking at this assignment, some questions that came up earlier was like problem one. It says what? Use the graph to answer each exercise. It says what is the value of the function when x is 4? I want everyone to take their pen or pencil right now and touch 4, where, where x is 4. Now, it can be disturbing if people start going this way. Why? Because that's the y-axis. We want to go to x is 4. x is 4 is right here. What is the value? Well, we move up, and it is? It's 8. Because that's where x e this line x equals 4 hits the graph. Uh huh. That would be a problem. <coughs> so the value of the function is 8. All right? That was one question that came up. The other question that comes up is a question like problem 30 that I want you to do tonight. However, if you're, if, whoa, that did not focus at all. Everyone read number 30. It's your, it's your story problem. Remember how you used to like stories? Now you're in school and you don't like them. It's like once upon a time, a $6,000 investment was, has an 8.5% loss each other year. Determine the value of the investment after each of the following years so we can live happily ever after. That's a good story. That's, that's a math. That's my aim. Okay. okay, so hey, we've got to use this form y equals abx. What's a? Good. Everyone write it down. Write down what A is. And now I want you to write down what B is on your own. That's the tougher part. You know what it is? Okay. Okay, now show your neighbor what you think B is. What B B? Okay, what B B? Holy cow, man. That's so bad. Oh, there we go. But we're decreasing. Yes. What's that? 0 0.085? Okay, we're losing money each year, so our number has to be between what and what? 0 and 1. 0 and 1. It can't be one point anything. We're decreasing. We're decreasing, and where are we decreasing from? No, what percent? Oh, no, where, where, hey man, I bring my pizza home, what percent do I want? 100. 100. You're starting at 100% and you're decreasing how much? How much? 93.5. You're losing? 81.5. No, you're losing? 93.5. Pause, raise your hand. What are we losing every year? Teddy? Yeah, you get that right here. I don't know where we're getting these other numbers. You're losing eight and a half each year. And if you lose eight and a half each year, what does that bring us to? What's 100 minus eight? 92 minus another 0.5. 91.5. 91 what is that decimal wise? That goes here. Hey, stay with me, guys. I know we've talked a lot, but is this between zero and one? No, not, not in percent form it is. If we put it to decimal, now it's between it, and there we got it. And then x represents the number of times we repeat it. So maybe 1, or 3, or 5, or 8. Okay? All right. Hey, you guys don't, it, it looks like a lot, but it's not quite a lot. You guys got to spend at least a half hour on it tonight. Okay? Woo. Wait, so just doing the evens? You're only doing the evens on the example today. Well, then why'd you make